Hi, my name is Jeff Pirtle, and I hope the next couple minutes change your practicing and your playing. In the world of trumpet and brass playing, there are many things that can sidetrack us. Mouthpieces, instruments, equipment, gadgets, and a whole bunch of crazy contraptions people come up with. To add to that, an almost infinite amount of ideas about how brass playing works coming from some great players. However, what often gets left out is how to practice and how to practice systematically so that we can pull the knowledge, wisdom, and practical experience out of the great method books of the past. The Clark's Technical Studies book is used by many people, but often misunderstood. How does this happen? People come to the book like that with their own ideas and try to interject it into the book instead of pulling information out of the book and from the original author in context. As an example, some people will say the Clark's Technical Studies book is a great flow studies book, not realizing that Clark never had that concept or those words anywhere in his writing or teaching. In study six, Clark says the following in the original text. Perhaps now you'll realize that much more benefit is derived from playing these exercises in one breath than by holding long tones. At the same time, endurance, technique, elasticity of lips, and the knack of reading music rapidly is gained. Clark is not a proponent of long tones. And contradicting that, he says that flexibility is the source of endurance. In study two, there are also a series of fingerings that should be added to the book. On line 29, you'll notice that all the A's and the E's are figured with third valve. And in a similar way, on line 36, all the A's and E's are with third valve. There are a myriad of other fingerings that should be put into the Clark's Technical Studies book. And this is alluded to in Clark's autobiography called How I Became a Cornetist, which anyone can read for free on my website called Pertle.com. In that book, Clark says that he injured his finger and that he devised a series of exercises to isolate and enhance and develop the, the use of his third finger. Those fingerings were were given to Claude Gordon from Herbert Clark in the 10 years that Claude Gordon took lessons with Herbert Clark. I studied with Claude Gordon for 10 years, and those same fingerings were given to me. Now, some of those fingerings are listed in Claude's Systematic Approach book, and that book is much more than a range study book. It gives examples of practice routines and how to put together various books. <clears throat> Herbert O. Clark's other book, fourth in the series, is called Setting Up Drills. <clears throat> now, this book is a very thin book and kind of an abbreviated form of Clark's technical studies with scales and arpeggios and some breath control things. And it also has some valuable information where he lists off the seven items of brass playing. You'll see these seven items listed here. And those same exact seven items are listed in Claude Gordon's Systematic Approach book, in just a slight different order. Also, in group one and two of setting up drills, you'll notice at the end of the line, there's a it says long hold. That long hold is not the same as doing long tones. It's actually there as, as an isometric squeeze to develop your wind power. And that concept is also elaborated on in the range studies in all the 52 lessons that are in Claude Gordon's Systematic Approach book. Herbert L. Clark's first book called Elementary Studies has a lot of valuable information in it too and is kind of designed for a more beginner, intermediate player. But at the end of it, he shows what's possible on the cornet and the range of the cornet from double high C down to double pedal C. So pedal tones were not something that Clark didn't treat. And again, Claude Gordon just elaborated on that with an entire book of, of 
range studies in the systematic approach book. The third book in the series by Harrell Clark is called Characteristic Studies. This book comes from, the material comes from um, various violin pieces that were adapted to the cornet, and there's also some valuable information about playing in this book. For example, on this page where it talks and remarks about tonguing, on the last paragraph, Clark says the following. First, always practice softly. Try to produce a light positive attack in the middle register. My tongue is never rigid when playing and rests at the bottom of my mouth. The end press slightly against the lower teeth. I then produce the staccato by the center of the tongue striking against the roof of the mouth. This I have practiced so as to acquire rapid single tonguing without fatigue, nor causing a clumsy tone. When under full control, double and triple tonguing become a simple matter by diligent practice, keeping the mind upon each articulation. It's worth noting that some people might call this anchor tonguing, but both Claude Gordon and Herbert L. Clark do not explain it that way. Clark says never rigid, that the tongue is never rigid. And he also says that it's slightly against the lower teeth. A couple pages later on page eight, it's worth noting that Clark actually shows K-tonguing by itself. Now K-tonguing is directly related to single-tonguing. Clark Gordon liked to call this way of single-tonguing that Clark described as, as K-tongue modified. The reason why he did that is when we K-tongue, we're using the middle portion of our tongue, and when we're single-tonguing this way, we're using more of the forward middle portion of our tongue. So when I am tonguing going T, 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 my, I'm not using the very tip of my tongue. I'm not using this portion here. I'm actually using something back a little bit more. And when I'm doing K tonguing going ki, 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 as it develops, instead of it being back in your throat, like k, 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 back here, it, it moves over time. It progresses and moves to here. So my K feels like it's about here. That's something that's a matter of development. So by playing an exercise like this with K tonguing by itself, or other sorts of exercises like that that you could find in other books like Daily Trumpet Routines by Claude Gordon or using K and other models in St. Jacomes on page 157. All those various things actually develop your single tonguing to work correctly. Speed will come over time, though. Sometimes it takes more patience. Claude Gordon told me it took him over three years to develop his single tonguing to be 16th notes at 144 beats a minute for a solid minute. He told me that Herbert Clark could do that at 180 beats per minute for a solid minute, but that it took Clark about seven years of constant work on it. Most people do not have the patience to do that, but with knowing how to play correctly and sticking with it, that is how great players obtain things that others think are impossible. To summarize, taking information and applying it to yourself must be a systematic thing. Just going through a book one time will not give you the full benefit of it. Just like something like the Clark's Technical Studies, just on one time will never reveal to you what is really in that book. Some of the things in that book you should not do the first time. For example, breath control and playing whisper soft and doing various things like that. You lay the foundation and you gradually build upon it. And systematically working through a book will allow you to pull things out of the book that others will never even know that's there. In order to develop as a player, we must practice different, not just play notes, not just focus on playing musical, but play in such a way that we're going to develop our skills so that we can play music, both musical and skillful in a way that 
that will make our playing more of a joy and make it more of a joy to the audience. That's the goal of all of our playing. I wish you the best and that you'll practice different. Thanks.